G'day and welcome to the Informers. I'm Xcute, joined today by Badges and SA. How are you boys doing? I'm living well, the dream, you. mate. How are you? <laughs> hmm. All right. So um, today's episode is going to be on the new episode, uh, the new ammo types that are coming on the roadmap in June. If I flick over to that really quickly, a quick look at this. Um, and you can actually see down here, uh, we've got incendiary ammunition, we've got plasma ammunition, uh, flak ammunition, distortion, and disarray. So, what are they? And I, uh, what what are they going to kind of do in game? In short, all right. So, as far as I can tell, flak ammo is a proximity-based ammo. So, as you fire it, if it goes past a ship, it'll actually go off. So that essentially increases your chance. So if it's if it's going to miss, it'll it'll detonate. So it'll at least hit them. Um, and if it gets right to the very end, it will also um, disintegrate or go off, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So um, as a uh, just a disclaimer, um, Badgers and I come from a world of real ammo types. Like we we, we have a bias built in that we we yeah. we feel we know what this ammo should do in game because we've seen it in real life. Mm -hmm. Um, that being said, the game is going to be, it's going to be gamified. As, as, and that's as what I'm here said. for. And that's what I'm here for. Because, <laughs> um, be, um, yeah. So, so, so traditional flak. Or, go ahead. Mm -hmm. well, well, we'll get back to that, right? So you all can right. tell me traditional, but I'm going to, I'm going to go through all of them. So I've done flak. Okay. Yeah. Incinerary, right? And this is where I think that we were saying before the show, like there were, there were differences. Because this is not like a traditional incinerary ammo to me. Because in most games, incinerary ammo, you shoot something and it catches on fire, Right. Now, in the description here, I'll literally read it word for word. This is a new ballistic projectile that burns on impact, causing the target to take damage over time and potentially cause items in the environment to catch fire. Notice the potentially part. So it is like the old ammo, but if it doesn't, for example, you could shoot it into a ship and it's just a hot shell that's doing damage because it's sitting there. So it's essentially almost like, a, you could almost see it as like a poison round too because it just does damage over time. Like in some games, you know, when you get poison shot and it just keeps ticking, mm -hmm. it's a tick round essentially, you know, a, a, a dot damage over time, right? Um, the disarray round says a new cha a charge ballistic projectile that emits electromagnetic pulses. So that's charged. So you, you, you know, kind of like hold it almost like pulling a bow and arrow. And the more you pull it, the more it is going to do the thing. And so it charges that shot that hits the outside of a ship or a person or whatever. And it disrupts. It's like a. It's like they're carrying an EMP with them, essentially, right? Um, the plasma ammo. Now, this is the one I think you'll probably like the most. Badges from our discussions about the Perseus. Remember, we talked about um, one that could leave clouds behind. That's plasma. So plasma essentially is like an AOE cloud um, that does. De I'll read it word for word. So furthermore, uh, on the damage type, will cause damage over time to act as vehicles and ships. So that's people actors of people. Uh, larger weapons of this type will also leave behind a hazard causing further damage to anything in close proximity to it. This will fulfill the original vision of the game as plaza weapons already have an in-game and therefore we have planned for in the future. So I think that means they're going to update the older ones. But yeah, so if you've got a bigger one, it'll leave like little clouds behind, which is very similar to what you talked about uh, with the Perseus, if you remember that. Right, mm -hmm. last one is distortion damage propagation. And so that is essentially the weapons we already have that are labeled distortion. And essentially what that does is, um, I'll, I'll, I'll read it word for word, it's just easier. Um, further work on the damage type to allow correct propagation into the system. This makes the location of impact much more important as powered items closer to the impact location will begin to suffer more severely. This will fulfill the original vision we had for distortion weapons we already have in game and those we have planned in the future. So what that essentially means is if you shoot at, um, near an engine of a ship, it can essentially turn the engine off. You could turn the power plant off. It's like It's almost like it makes like a little splash damage. Yeah. through the hollow so, so and, and can damage the components. Yeah, well, where we used to have this before, um, distortion damage used to target a specific system. Yep. I think it was um, coolers, um, yes. and it used to shut your coolers down. Mm -hmm. um, whereas now what it's saying is that basically anything that it's it, anything in that area, so if, you, if it's just hitting armor plates, but on the other side of the armor plate, mm -hmm. there's a component like your, I don't know, your gravity generator, then... They could shut your grub gen though. Yep. So I think they've kind of got 
a bit fancy with some of the lingo. I think they could have actually simplified some of this. I think flacken and centering mm -hmm. kind of makes sense. The disarray one, I can see why they called it that, but essentially, isn't it just really EMP ammo? That's kind of where my brain goes. Um, Arch demo. Yeah. yeah, and the plasma, as soon as you just think of like plasma clouds, and I think the reason they've called it plasma too is also they're going to have smaller weapons, as they've said in the description, that, that are plasma, but they won't make the clouds. So it is a size-based thing. Don't ask me where the cutoff is. I assume it could be something like between size four and five, like, um, you know, how you got the capital and non-capital weapons. It might be something similar to that. It could be as simple as ship weapons versus on foot weapons, but we can talk about that uh, later too. But the distortion stuff um, is interesting as well. But to me, one of the reasons we're doing this show is just how much that's going to change the game. So I know you want to talk about um, real world examples, but, not all of these are real ex world examples, essay. So, what ones do you want to talk about? Well, I mean, I think we should just go through each one, uh, one by one, and maybe okay. do a, uh, a brief sp uh, spin up of real world current examples of this, and then go into what we think the game mm -hmm. might actually do. Yep. Um, I think right. we could kind so, of agree. Flack is pretty close, though. Yeah, to real world. So, would you so agree? Flack is. I mean, but there's there's different yeah. types of flack. So, uh, and, and by the way, there's a when we categorize ammo types in the real world. There are so many different slight variations of these things over time in history that we're putting a whole bunch of stuff into mm -hmm. one group that, um, and then making generalizations about the real world and what could happen. So generally yes. speaking, there are two mm -hmm. types of flak. There is your dumb flak that's timed, and then you have smart flak. So smart flak would be something that when it knows it's in proximity of a target, it, it explodes. Mm -hmm. And then dumb flak, you would actually time it. So you would say, I want it to burst at this height. Yeah. Or this amount of time after it's left the barrel. So that's so I, I think that's smart, yeah. Well, as far as yeah, I, I think it's yeah. safe to say that all flak is going to be mm -hmm. smart flak and starts mm -hmm. this. And I don't think they're going to have dumb flak. Um, now that being said, how will this ammo be used? Because to me, flak ammo traditionally has been an anti-aircraft type of ammunition. It hasn't been on aircraft. So are they going to be making this something that is only found or available for something like, um, uh, like, not the ballista? What's the uh, the yeah, Atlas platform. Are you talking about yeah, all? Yeah. Yeah. Centurion. Yeah. Yeah. Centurion. Yeah. Centurion, yeah. So is it going to be something that it's a, a Centurion-specific ammo or a tower-specific ammo? Or is it going to be something that you could find on a ship? So, and... I can, so, so one that came up to me besides that would be like incoming torpedoes, like anti-torpedo ammo okay. you know you know how they showed the javelin shooting torpedoes and stuff that was one it just was like well if it can explode and it does damage to the torpedo it's like when you really need to kill something that'll do it but then it's not the best ammo to use if you're trying to target something in the back and it's exploding on all the little things in front you know what i mean um so flak you know so you know and, and i'm i'm not going to get into the to the ground version of this because i don't if, if anything it'll be artillery right that's going to be your, your equivalent yeah. um but when we're talking about flak, the one thing that I think is realistic and would actually make a difference for the game is that there's an initial charge at the center of it, right? There's an explosion, yep. but then it's the projectiles that do damage. But the projectiles are far smaller than a normal projectile. So we're talking about peppering a ship with small things that don't do a ton of damage. But against a missile or a torpedo, it would be extremely effective. You might have to hit it two or three times to take it out, so, but it would be effective. So just to, for, for my remember, I might be remembering this wrong. But in World War II, a lot of the um, flak, when it exploded, it was actually the shrapnel that kind of tore through planes and stuff. Is that yes. it? So it's almost yeah. like a frag grenade, essentially, because that's what frag yeah, grenades do, don't they? They have all that extra yeah. surface area, and so that it essentially explodes, and it's the tiny bits of shrapnel that go into you that actually do the damage. There's a concussive force in the initial blast, that and, if, too, and if, yeah. that hit, if flak went off right next to your ship, the most, you would take a huge amount of damage from the shrapnel, but also the concussive blast would potentially knock you back. Yep, okay. um, but the shrapnel itself is what does damage. Now, those projectiles are moving at whatever the concussive for forces rate is with that amount of, um, of mm. uh, force. But that being said, um, what makes it dangerous is the spread. It's mm. the, it, you know, a single flat going off near your ship probably is not going to do any real damage to your ship. Um, it's going to damage it slightly, but it's not going to take it out. A lot of flak going off near your ship, like two or three uh, different positions firing it at you at one time, it's going to shred you. It's just going to slowly chip away your armor and take you out. So we didn't mm -hmm. talk about this before the show, but I'm just kind of having this kind of realization, and that's how these things unfold. 
um, is do you think that they could have different manufacturers for the same type? So for example, with kind of what you described, you could almost have a flak ammo that disperses really far, but because it goes really far, it doesn't have as much concussive, concussive, what was the word you concussive. used? Concussive. Concussive force. Yeah. Sorry, I just lost it. Yeah. And it, so it goes, so it goes further, but does less damage. But then you've got one that's not as far that does heaps more damage. So you could actually essentially have different sizes. Do you think that could so, be something that the potentially might come down the road? So this is a, first of all, it's a great question, but I kind of want to ask Badgers this question because mm -hmm. the, we're talking at this point, we're talking ammunition that would be ship based, like a larger vessel. Um, and they do have programmable ammo, uh, ammo mm -hmm. that you can change how it detonates and the, the amount of charge. Yep. So Badgers, what do you think of that? Um, possibility do you think it's going to yeah. be different ammo or tuning ammo to do a certain what, so you mean like you could almost scroll up the mouse wheel and it just fucking goes further and does less damage before or you can you scroll shoot. it down and it just go yep. oh okay that's okay i didn't so, think of that either yeah okay so the the four and a half inch gun on the front of naval warships and the, the four inch gun on the, on the front of um u.s warships and a lot of other nato vessels as well um there's a doppler head in the ammunition so what you can do is you can set it to explode a set distance above ground. So when you're firing support, obviously, if you're trying to hit tanks or buildings or anything that's entrenched, you want it to impact. You want that immediate concussive. You know, a four and a half inch shell striking a human being, that human being is done for, but it's massive overkill, right? You don't need that. So if you're trying to attack light, you know, um, vehicles or infantry in the open, you want the air bass because you want that shrapnel. So they can actually change, and then depending on what you're hitting, there's all sorts of tables you look at to find out what the optimal... The scientists who figured this sort of stuff out must be really proud of themselves. Um, but, you know, this sort of optimal <laughs> distance above the ground to figure out, you know, the maximum amount of, of damage that you can do. Um, I think your idea about different manufacturers definitely works. I think maybe not on, because obviously the further you want to throw stuff, although not so much in space, I guess, the larger the concussive force that's required. So that would be directly small, then just getting bigger. And then the question becomes, well, why would you use the small stuff aside mm. from that it would be cheaper? I think mm. one of the things you could do with it is the size of the fragmentation. Mm. So you can, because what you do is you build that shell with an inherent weakness so that when the concussive force goes off, you don't need enough because it splits mm. along preset lines in very much the same as things like cluster munitions are designed to break up. And okay, they don't use yeah. concussive force to do that. L like how but the, they're designed um, to break up in very specific ways. Like how a frag grenade is actually shaped that way so it breaks in those chunks. So you, you'd have different patterns essentially on the, the shell so it breaks in a particular way. Is that... I'm in, I'm in the ballpark? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, you, you are. I, I do want to bring yeah. up uh, two things for our audience. Uh, or one thing, mm -hmm. actually, is that there's... When, and a, and a frag grenade comparison is a really good comparison for this. So ammunition and frag grenade, although they may do the same thing, this, this whole dispersing uh, small particles, um, a frag grenade has a single charge in it. It has a single explosive charge. Ammunition has an initial charge to launch the ammunition and then a secondary charge in the ammunition that explodes. So it'd be so more like a rocket propel grenade might be a better way to look at it then. Yeah. I mean, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's the same thing. Um, the... The one thing that I think is that, that I want to make sure that, um, well, I don't know if, if CIG is going to go down this road, but it'd be really cool if they did. Mm. Initially, it would be in a ship on a, on a screen, but eventually it could actually be with the ammunition, is the ability to pre-program your ammunition. So I don't think they're going to allow you, they might at first allow you to flip a switch on your ship and say, this is what the ammunition is going to do. It's going to be a small burst with hard, high charge or a wide burst, and you go to a different screen for your ammo and you select it and your ammo is programmed. What I would like them to do, especially in a ship like the Perseus, because I think that would bring a, a new st style of gameplay, loading the magazines and programming the ammo for that crew, um, an extremely cool depth to the to the ammunition. If you had to run to a torpedo, let's say, and change the head on the torpedo inside your ship so that it is a, a flak head on it to do you know a damage to a, a larger vessel or a small group of ships versus a large vessel, which would do a penetration head. Um, that would vastly improve the gameplay on these larger ships like the Perseus, like the uh, Polaris, where, you know, like the Retaliator. 
-hmm. If you're on a retaliator and your bombardier crew is changing heads on warheads, that would be a whole other level of gameplay, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You actually, if if you watch the film Fury, you actually watch them do it. Um, and there's the bit at the end where the tank's defending the crossroads, and you hear him say, um, "Charge three, skip those," and then he swears, and he's talking about actually skipping the shells off the ground yeah. to then blow up. And you actually watch um, John Bernthal grab a screwdriver, and all it is, it's literally a notch, and he's got a couple of clicks. And he just moves it the number of clicks to get the setting that he wants, and then he blows the shell. Um, and that's literally what you'd be doing, except, you know, maybe it's a warhead, maybe it's some manual setting you could do. There's all sorts of stuff that you could do to, to change the way the ammo works. So, yeah, um, so I'm not a Navy guy at all. In fact, yeah. I love to make fun of Badgers in his whole career path. But Thanks, the mate. idea he of running often. through a ship, like... Mm -hmm. So, so you have the captain saying, or whoever it's going to be, like you you have a crew, and you turn to your buddy, you know, on, obviously on Discord, you're not returning to him, but you're like, you say to him, hey, we have the wrong, like, we don't have the right ammo for this fight. And that person stands up out of their station, runs down a hallway, goes to like the torpedo or to the gun to like do that whole thing, three clicks and change the ammo type. That is a hugely cool type of gameplay. It's literally mm -hmm. taking the interior of your ship and turning it into a an action scene. I think um, it from, brings you into the depth of it. I think from a gameplay perspective, they've always wanted this to be World War II in space. So I actually think that yeah. they probably do want things like that, but they are so far away from where we are now. Cause this is kind of like, I guess, tier zero of ammo is kind of a way to look at it. I know they don't call them that anymore, but um, getting back to the flak stuff, I'm actually looking at like when you were talking about that um, earlier, I was actually going, I could actually see a place where someone uses this against infantry from a ship and they use the proximity of the ground to detonate yeah. the artillery, charges, yeah. um, artillery, or even, even just a ship that comes in. And because then it detonates just above the surface, it does those fragmentation shots and you can just take out a whole bit of infantry. Because even right now, you try and shoot someone on the ground with a laser repeater and it's really quite hard because of the, um, mm. um, yeah. Yeah, because the offset. The convergence or yeah, yeah. offset, yeah. And it just doesn't work too well. But if you had flak, just bang, and they're gone, you know, first shot. Yeah. Um, so, so I can see... You have that in that. the infantry as well, just to, to, to flex a bit of my infantry knowledge. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a term, it's a term, isn't it? I think, is it height above bore? And it basically, it references the distance between your sight and the, the level of your sight, the level of the, of the, of the uh, barrel. At very close quarters, is it? You think you're you're going to get your perfect yeah, headshot, so, and you yeah. smash them in the jaw because that's the difference between distance between the height of the rifle and the height of the so, the barrel. So with ammunition, ammunition has a, a particular um, uh, grain. It's going to have a certain amount of charge to it. When you shoot a weapon, there's going to natural drop of that ammunition. It's going to curve. So when you set your sights, you're actually aimed up slightly. The barrel's aimed up slightly because the ammunition needs to go and travel. Let's say for mm -hmm. for let's use an M4 US uh, AR platform. It's going to be 300 meters is going to be your large your longest target in distance. When you shoot the target at 50 meters, you actually aim down because the you know mm -hmm. that the projectile is going to go up for that first 50 meters. If you aim directly at the projectile, you're probably going to go over its head. So you actually aim at the yeah. bottom of the target. And when you're shooting at the 300 meter, you aim up. Because of that drop, you need it to match. So you aim at the head of the target, but you'll hit the base of it. So ammunition, when you're dealing with atmosphere, and that's another good thing to bring up about this, like mm. flak in atmosphere um, is a completely different type of, of charge. Yep. And when yep. they add in the physics to these, um, to the, if they add in physics ammunition, which I hope they do. I reckon they will. Um, I do. Like the, the way yeah. everything else has gone and they've gone very Newtonian mm -hmm. physics and all that no reason not to they're going to have it on the ships i can see totally every reason to have it on the wet on the, the ammo and that's really good because you are going to have those two different skill sets in at mo and out yeah you know so i think it's think a good what idea. this means for 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 a battle space if you're using flak ammo in space mm -hmm. and let's say it's proximity charge it only goes off when it comes in a certain proximity of a ship you could literally shoot where you think your ships are going to jump into yep and the ammunition would sit there and as soon as the ships show up boom 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 they starts going off they're almost like mini mines the only it. problem that with the flak ammo is it actually says that it, when it hits the end of its proximity it'll detonate 
is what uh, okay, yeah, okay. so as soon so as it gets to its maximum range it just detonates but well, that, that's what you, really interesting just, Sorry, go on. Just, just real quick to add this because it might add to your discussion the other thing i was thinking of when you were saying in space and stuff is you could actually have certain places in the universe where certain ammo is highly dangerous to yourself so you could be like let's look what's there the disarray ammo which is essentially like amp ammo you could be in a nebula that's statically charged, and if you fire it, it actually detonates as soon as it gets out into the nebula. So it literally explodes on you. Same with incendiary. Mm -hmm. You could do yeah, like gas, gas nebula bottle. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Now you're with me. All right, cool. So yeah. I just wanted to bring yeah, that yeah. up as well. So it, it could there could be different places, because we we're talking about in Atmo and out of Atmo, and I started thinking of, is there any other places you could be where it changes things? And that's how yeah. I got to that. Anyway, sorry, Badges, well, you want to say? The, the thing with the flak ammo is, like, I just get such strong Battlestar Galactica vibes from mm. it. The idea that capital ships, when you get up to things like the Idris, the Javelin, you can actually, exactly the same as Essay was saying about running down and changing it, you can set that so you've got near, medium, far range, and mm. you actually set that as to your defense flak turret. Mm. Yeah. You actually set that as a setting, and then you've got to you know, consider the range of the engagement, what it is you're trying to hit, um, you know, when you need to start firing. Um, mm. Because obviously, the further away you, your flak screen, the sooner you need to start firing to intercept well, what's coming at even, you. It's not even that. I mean, think about like a hammerhead right now. You would never mm. put cannons on a hammerhead, right? Mm. Who, who here would put cannons on a hammerhead right now? With flak ammo, it actually could make sense to run your, like, we're literally taking entire weapon systems that are useless right now. Like your cannons mm -hmm. and you're giving them because i think one thing that we haven't discussed is this ammo won't be available for gatling is my guess uh, it's going to be very I, specific, I think specific we, to the, the I, type of weapon oh so that that's something i'm not sure yet of but i think we can agree that you won't be getting them on lasers it essentially means it's ballistic <laughs> only i think that's as bad as far because because well, well, because this is the other thing we haven't discussed is different levels or grades because you could have smaller payloads on gatling and then larger ones. But it would do nothing to a ship, though. I could see that potentially having a, a tiny amount different of value size, on ground. Different size ships, yeah. though. So if you had Gatlings, you you know they might be good. Well, look at the Hammerhead. It's specifically tailored to fighters. So it, so, so that those smaller rounds, to my mind, and you're the military guys, you tell me that means that they'll be tailored at smaller things. So on a Gatling gun that or the Hammerhead is tailored to take out fighters, that makes sense to me. Go the other way to the Perseus, it's bigger charges that are slower firing that are targeted at bigger ship. That makes so much sense to me, but you tell me if I'm wrong. So speaking of ammo type, and I'm really getting more into traditional on the ground ammo here. So, you know, ship ammo, I think Badgers could probably speak. Oh, better, answer my question. Answer my questions talking, on payload. You, I, I need to know. When like, we're talking about ammunition, and it's. Mm -hmm. um, Ammunition by design, some of it is designed to fragment by design. Okay. So I'm going to use that for a comparison piece. So when you have ammunition that's designed to fragment, if it hits a human body, it's going to go through the body. It's going to bounce off of stuff and really mess you up. If it hits a car, the same round, it's probably going to pierce the skin but not do much damage. And to me, when we're talking about these smaller, like let's say the Gatlings on a hammerhead, it might be you know, flak ammo, but I, it, the damage it would do to the ship is, would be minimal. You're wasting the, the kinetic projectile. So, but like a, in my mind, but a smaller ship needs smaller damage done to it. So, the way my brain goes with it with the gamification is essentially I'm going to use my glass here, and this is a, a bullet coming past. If it's a normal piece of ammo, it's going to go past and hit nothing. But if it's flak, at least does some damage to it by detonating. Okay, I, I, had, an, I had an accident in my house, I'm, I'm, I'm remodeling upstairs. Um, my father in law was here, we're cutting studs to, to build a wall, and um, I have a miter saw. There's a guard, there's a safety, it's a saw that goes down like this. There's a safety guard that automatically moves when you saw, because I have the fancy model. And while I was coming down, um, the spring actually, just by timing, snapped. And when I, when I came down, I hit the guard. It's aluminum guard. And the blade of my saw s sent a ton of small pieces of aluminum all the way up my arm, this side of my body, and into my face. And actually into my, my I was wearing eye protection, so we're eye protection kids. But um, the thing of it is, those little projectiles, I looked at my arm, and, I, and I've, this is not my first rodeo. I've actually had this happen in my body before. Um, and I looked at it, and I looked at my wife, because my wife was up there. And as soon as I looked at her, I knew she was going to see it. I started bleeding out of these little holes. All right? The amount of damage, it did hurt me. I had blood coming out of me. But 
these little pieces of aluminum, I literally just took my fingers and started picking them out of my body and like took them out of myself. And because it's superficial damage, yeah. like you, you are right. It will cause damage, but it's not enough to really do anything well, to the ship other than annoy it. So, so, yeah. so, so from a game perspective, right. You got to remember this is a game, right? So, um, again, yes, it is much lower. So what, what I'm trying to say is if you scale the payload to fit the size of the ships, this is a real world concept versus a gamification mm -hmm. problem, right? So from my perspective, you make it so that the payload matches the ship. So in that, in that case, the small ammo types would work for small ships. And then you could have medium ammo for medium. You get where I'm going very quickly. And you just dial the damage to suit because obviously a small ship is going to take far less to kill. Than a, than a capital ship but like if you use a single capital like if you take a perseus shot and use it on a on a mustang as an example it will kill it but how much overkill will it kill it you know what I, mean? I guess what i'm saying and this would be my last point on this because mm. i think we've, we've we have a horse well we're um, almost 25 minutes in and we haven't got past the first ammo type so. yeah so flak from a shell that's this big versus flak mm. from a round that's this big we're talking about a, a significant amount of difference of kinetic energy that's going to be behind yep. it and explosive mm. charge. So my only point of like having flak ammo for Gatling, mm. yes, it would annoy the fuck out of you to like mm. have all these little bursts around you, like just ticking at your ship. Mm. But I don't see that ticking out a ship around this size out of a cannon. You know, let's say we're using size three Gatling, mm. size three cannon. That's going to mess you up. Mm. And to me, that's where I see them going with the ammo types. I the only reason I don't think they're going to have it for a smaller round is because it doesn't really do anything you'd rather have the kinetic force of a single mm. piece of metal hitting your ship that's my opinion mm. i think where we can leave uh, this then is is to we'll just have wait and see what they do um but yeah, i can yeah. see it going both i, I honestly Actually, can see it go both but ways I, I really can i think it's yeah mm. I, I think it's worth mentioning that flak ammo makes sense against lightly armored i.e fighter targets um mm. and stuff that is not designed to take hits mm. like non-combat vessels yeah. Um, flak ammo doesn't make sense mm. as you start to go up in scale mm. of, of of vessel um, it, because it, the armor, as, you know, it, as mm. as they basically said, mm. you know, his skin was enough to stop that that round. If that saw blade had just left the the saw intact mm. and come at mm. him, that would have been a yeah. very, that would have yeah. been a very different story, right? To, to SA's credit, the way, the way I could see it being used, the way you're explaining it, rather than say something like the hammerhead, is you put it in the Perseus so it allows it to have something to at least attempt to take out fighters. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. a bigger shell that's but, but that bigger shell that's yes. tailored for more smaller little things. So I can't, yeah. I can't. That's why I, I said I can see it going both and, ways. And anyway. that would be would, my kind of last point, and I think on the flak mm -hmm. ammo is that. I I can't recall, mm. um, certainly in recent time, anything that even attempts to act like flak mm. at a scale less than twenty millimeters. Mm. And I've unfortunately I've just realised I've got a shell in the next room. I've got a twenty millimeter shell in the next room. You're talking that, mm. right? Is the is the is the 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 the, entr the exit of the of the shell? So first of all i've got everyone to look through that so there you go Woo! but also doing um, this as well. that anyway. is that is not something that you fire at you, you're not talking minigun mm. that's far larger than minigun mm. um yeah, yeah. that is the sort of round that comes up the front of an a10 just yeah. to give you an idea how big that round is um you know barrett like 50 i think it's four times the size of a 50 mm. cal round mm. um Four times the girth, seeing as we're being rude, but yeah. All right, all right 28 minutes in, so I'm going to switch to the next one. Remember, the way that's going, we're going to be a five-hour episode. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, for me, and you guys correct me if, you're, if, if you think I'm wrong here, Inc the way they described it in the um, description for incendiary ammo, I think that is strongly tailored armor. Because if you can fire it into armor and it keeps doing damage, and if the armor is going to fall off like I think it may, it's like a dark, uh, you know, a, a, an armor eating round because you put it there and it just keeps burning and essentially makes the armor fall off. That's so, where my brain goes. There, God, this is so. My pet peeve about the ammo types is I don't think they're naming them correctly or grouping them correctly. Agreed. This shows to me that CIG <laughs> doesn't have somebody on staff that's military or a consultant that's saying, "Hey, this is how you group these types of damage together because of the way that the 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 science behind it, right? The, the engineering." Mm. So. But it in is a world, game, Not they're not scientists, they're, they're game no, no. developers. So I just want to say that in counterpoint. And I agree with that. I just think that they could have more effective communication and and proper rollout of these damage types 
if they looked at it from an actual armorer slash military perspective. All right. So that being said, um, there are two rounds that do what I think they intend to do. One of them are armor piercing rounds, um, depleted uranium, stuff like that. Um, that's actually an ammo type that's missing here. And that's mm -hmm. something that I, I don't understand. Why is there no armor piercing round in this group? Because armor piercing rounds, um, the reason why they're not used commonly is they're very expensive. We're talking like 10 grand a round. So you don't use them normally in a weapon. It would be a choice of the, you know, they go into a standard weapon that's designed to take them the barrel and they'd be, you know, spending money on, on ammo versus the weapon type. What, so I, what, you're, what, you're, yeah. what you're describing there is exactly why I think this is the anti um, armor round, because rather than it being piercing, like, you know, how ballistics can go through shields rather than it kind of being like that, where you can, well, I can just cheat the system and I'll shoot with anti, you know, anti piercing rounds and I can just kill you inside right through they actually want the armor to have the effect where it actually does block stuff right so rather than having it um just always be blocked they gave us an ammo type that can kind of eat away at it that's why i think that that is the anti well it's the closest thing we're going to get to it is. It armor is. piercing it yeah and that's the second type of armor piercing so mm. the second type of armor piercing ammunition actually heats up a core of usually metal the common one everyone knows is copper mm -hmm. like a like a, a a charge from a mine um it superheats a material and the material burns through so like i've only shot a, a um anti-tank rocket one time in training that's the only time that i ever got to really do it and well, he shot, shot the school bus so they won't let him do it no, <laughs> no but one of the things they do is there's an eight there's an old apc out in the field and when you shoot it mm. and it hits it you actually get this like glowing you know presence like a burning because it's it superheated that armor and then a hole appears Right. And it's and that's because that's the way that's designed, and I think that's what they're going for. They're mm -hmm. not incendiary ammo to me. When we're like on the ground, you know, uh, grunt is going to be like a um, mm -hmm. like a tracer round. So I mean that that you see to be able to walk in your fire at night. Mm -hmm. um, we that know, being said, we, we, that's not what they're doing with this. Well, we know we've got the, the way they've been doing ar armor ever since the very beginning was always these hexagon tiles, and if you can again shoot that and the tiles fall off. You see where I'm going with this? Like, and I, I, I the, the way I kind of figure armor is going to work is like ballistics is the armor is laser repeaters is the shield, you know? So, um, lasers are regenerable yeah. and they've pretty much got unlimited ammo, just like shields are unlimited, but they've got a regen where ballistics is temporary, but it's way stronger. And obviously it looks like it's going to be even way more stronger today if you've got all these different types. Um, and it's the same thing with armor, where armor is temporary, but it is really strong and you can put it in an area, but it can be shot off. So once it's shot off, then anyone can shoot that area of the ship. So, yeah. And, and this whole thing of new ammunition types coming this quickly tells us that armor is about to have meaning in the game. Because none of this makes any sense without armor being some, never some type of, of presence. I never thought of that. He actually does have a point there, but just they have to, uh, I don't, well. They do. I mean, if you, if you don't have proximity no, damage no, in but, armor. No, no, no that, that, so they can add it later, technically, because the incendiary ammo just means it sits in the hull of the ship and continues to do damage. Like I'm thinking about incendiary but, specifically, right? It just means you keep taking damage over time, but like it, you can clearly tell that it probably is better at taking armor out than the, the hull, you know, in my opinion. Um, but there, you can still have that in game. I can see that working, but it just won't be as effective until you until you have armor. Um, yeah, okay, that's interesting. They, but but I agree with you. It would be better if there was armor. I mean, I, I just I can see a reason for and not. But again, I can see both sides. Um, so, so Badgers, question I have for you for incendiary rounds. If we're if what we're talking about is impact, um, either superheated impact or something that continues to de degrade the armor for larger ships what is the comparison to that in in current naval slash ground combat like for large shells you muted bud yeah due to budget cuts um <laughs> <laughs> um so genuinely now so you know where we used to have ships with a lot of armor you know thinking world war ii in the period that that they are basing star citizen on um, more armor, better, stop the round, you know, or reduce the damage. Whereas now, modern navies are, hopefully it'll just pass through and not explode. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's the thing, right? Is you, Hopefully it doesn't hit anything important and it just 
pushed past us through, and we and and we see that in the Falklands conflict, the amount of times we were picking um, bombs out of our vessels, you know, five hundred pounders, which is like squeaky bum time. It's a little bit worrying mm. um, when you're hauling a five hundred pound bomb down the corridor to then hoy it over the side and hope it doesn't go off in the meantime. Um, I just. Um, Oh, go, keep going. I'll, 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 keep. <laughs> but this, for me, weirdly, and I don't know whether it's a reflection of the fact that we don't, you know, so it's it's where Essay was talking about superheated cores and stuff. A lot of that is very much now um, ground-based brackets tank combat. We don't use a lot of that sort of stuff anymore um, just because we're not trying, you're not trying to defeat armor. What's the point? You know, you, you, HP yeah. rounds are enough. You use the weight of the shell as the penetrative uh, effect. Mm. And then you've got the the explosion. And, you know, because ships aren't armored anymore, the HE will do a lot more damage because it basically crumples the compartments around it um, and yeah, causes so it. Uh, force, yeah, yeah, it can yeah force. exactly that. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing, too, in ground combat. We're moving more to concussive force um, than. Mm-hmm. than than a small projectile. Although, I mean, it, we're always going to have that, but it's just, it's a lot easier to get a hit on the target you intend to without destroying everything around it. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting reading them because when I first read them, and I, I, I only skimmed them before we did this, is that yeah, for me, um, incendiary would make sense to do much less damage and its primary utility being causing fires on board. Mm-hmm. Um, and that plasma ammo would make more sense as being the armor because you get almost yeah. like an alien where you get the blood kind mm. of left behind and it's yeah. eating through the armor. But given what you've said, what it does. like plasma, yeah, I mean, like, absolutely. When you do armor piercing rounds, what it's doing is it's creating plasma for the damage. So to me, I was yep. confused that they have plasma ammo and incendiary. If incendiary is going to be anti armor ammo, so think, to me, they're the same thing in a way. I think Badges mm-hmm. is catching up to where I'm, I'm at. That I was about two minutes ago and I was talk- almost talked over top of him was I actually look at things like say you might not be able to do it in ships so easily but in vehicles or on foot is it hits you and if you leave it for too long then it catches into flame so like you can see the gameplay oh I've just been sh- shot in my arm if I pull the like if, can, like, like if there's some kind of gameplay to pull it out you know like, so, like if you're an engineer only certain classes will be able to do it like otherwise you'd actually hurt yourself but like you see what I mean? Like, if they actually can get the round out, they won't catch in fire and they won't keep taking damage. Like, because that's not a medical thing. That's a, that's an engineering thing, is it not? Yeah. So that's a well, so rather than a medical round, like like if you just get shot and you take damage, like okay, I've got a medical. Instead of there, you're turning to the engineer and your team is like, oh shit, I've been shot with this. Can you get this off me? Different yeah. a different gameplay. So I'm going from a gameplay that's resistant to that. Mm. Like yes. it, it could be a way to differentiate your the type of body armor you're wearing. Maybe like like you don't catch armor. into you don't catch on fire when you get shot with an incendiary round. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're wearing that particular armor because it's designed to suppress the flames, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, but a but a solid a full, a full jacket ammo might mm. penetrate the same armor. So like you're making exactly. decisions on your kit of you know. Wh- wh- when you buy it, design it, when you build mm. it. And I love that aspect of it. Cause mm. I think, I mean, you and I have talked about this. I really want to do an episode eventually on the future of FPS gameplay and mm-hmm. star citizen only because it, this is the first game we've ever seen where you can literally go down the hallway of a ship that's in combat and have combat within the ship. It's just yep. such a different game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this, yeah. you know, incendiary ammo, when we get down to it, to me, and again, it's the pet peeve I have about the whole ammo system is that really they should be talking about damage types, not ammunition. Like, I tend can, to agree with that um, because because one of the things we are going to talk about that you wanted to talk about was towards the end is what else this will go into. So like we know from way back in the day they had like six different grenade types or, or yeah. however many they had, right? So we know that this these damage types are going to appear again in other things. So I, I know I've well, probably I mean, given the game away a bit, but I think it's relevant. Flak yeah. ammo. I mean, flak ammo is a freaking grenade. Mm. It is that is what it is, and you know essentially. Yeah. So, mm. all right, so sorry. All right, let's go on to disarray because we're not even halfway, and we're forty minutes in. Yeah, yeah, we got this. We're, we're talking way too mm. much. Anyway, so uh, disarray again is this is a new charge ballistic projectile that emits electrodynamic pulses, helping to not only damage the target but also disrupt the power systems. So this, I could see this on a Titan suit being used. You know, it just totally disables 
the Titan suit. Um, again, I could see this being used by bounty hunters to subdue the target rather than kill them. Um, and and I, I assume that that'd be a very similar thing to distortion damage. Like you'd want to use both of these. Um, I don't know. You guys I, tell I, me. I think, I, I think potentially it would be the other way around. I think really? if okay. you are looking to, to disable, not kill, you, you want distortion because distortion absolutely does not, if they keep it the same way as I understand it, doesn't damage, it just shuts down. Whereas the disarray still has a ballistic effect. Um, and then carries the added chance of interfering with systems. They both um, they both actually state that they do damage though to the internal systems. So you are correct though. I think you would do more damage with the disarray because it is a physical um, projectile. So you are kind of you I, are correct. I agree. I give no, you no, no, sorry. I I, I I put it the other way around. Is it for me? It makes more sense that because the disarray has ballistic damage. That's what I meant. And mm. also interferes with systems mm -hmm. that disarray because it's doing ballistic damage will have a lower chance of affecting really? systems than distortion oh i thought like, it'd go the other way that, but i, I thought it'd go the other what's way the point of distortion because to me but it seems like the, it seems like the middle ground between a normal ballistic round and distortion because it's it, it's got the physical shot that goes in and then it sets it off so it's so got to physically oh, get right. there before it mm. so talking about ballistics right um when a round penetrates anything it distorts the round so if you're going mm -hmm. to do this right if you're gonna have disarray ammo it actually would be significantly low damage ballistic damage what you're trying to do is you're trying to attach a device basically to your target mm -hmm. but then that then disrupts it so i agree with badgers that it's probably okay. going to be very similar right. to distortion but much lower yield okay um but it's going to be a matter of how many rounds of this distortion ammo did you put on your target so like if you have a ship and you hit it with five rounds, there are five devices attached to that ship that would just that would start damaging the ship internally. Okay. Um, but if you have high ballistic value to that am to the ammo, as soon as that hits the ship, it's just going to basically shred your ammo, which defeats the purpose of the the okay. ammo type. Well now you've explained so, it like that, I could actually see you know guys you were talking about programming the ammo and stuff. You could actually set the ooh. size of the disruption. But because of the size of the battery, it does it for less time. Or do you have more time, but a physically smaller size? I could see that being a part of that program. Well, you guys I, I think it comes back to what you say about gaming, gamifying mm. things, right? If you were put this into, into a table, you'd have um, damage against an armored target, damage against lightly or unarmored targets, mm. ability to cause fires, ability to, 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 to affect secondary systems. And that's then where you'd go, you know, high, low, medium, mm. whatever. And I think if disarray ammo has the ability to go through and actually strike stuff ballistically, mm. you know, so a, you've got, you know, the engine isn't pre it's protected by some armor, but if the armor's been stripped, you're just hitting the engine, right? Um, whereas distortion, yes, it's it's potentially a little less accurate because it's doing an area it's where it hits mm. it's not doing disarray talks about sending out a pulse mm. um so it's not doing that it's hitting it's hitting location and yes you've got to be hitting the right location yeah. to get the effect so, that you're after so, so the way i'm kind of visualizing it now you guys have come to explain it's more like an emp bullet so it's like it's landing there and then it's, it's setting off its own little mini emps rather than it smacking in and it's an emp charge yeah i'm kind of getting it now and okay uh, all right so all right. I, I i have Sorry, Sorry, have you seen the uh, uh, the Marvel movie? Um, was it Captain America: Civil War, where Black Widow has those little darts that are electro darts on her wrist? Mm. And there's a mm. moment in there where she's shooting um, the Black Panther, and it's slowing him down. And he has to take them off because it's it's like disrupting his suit and mm. and shocking mm -hmm. him. To me, that's the way I view this ammo. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's all, so so the way you could almost see it in another turn of phrase is you know the hacking missiles they talked about where it attached the outside of the hole it's that but in bullet form so it hit, attached the outside of the hole and there's like little static electricity or something that goes over yeah, the hole yeah yeah, yeah 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 okay okay yeah okay yeah that works okay um yeah badges plasma ammo does that actually kind of excite you because I I remember you talking <laughs> about clouds and and leaving like acidy eating clouds and stuff um. Yeah, I, I I hadn't actually considered it as a cloud as you talked. I just considered it like this 
globule of of superheated yeah. stuff that exactly like alien blood from alien mm. right where it hits something it attaches it starts eating and at some point it becomes you know it, it's corrosiveness kind of equals mm. out and it stops doing damage and you end up with this kind of really cool plasma damage looking effect on so, the hull so, so i but think it could so I think Sorry, so just to clarify i think you're kind of half right mm. right and, and and what let me explain in atmosphere I could see it being like a pool of plasma on the ground, but in space, mm. it's like water. It would be a pool of water or, or you know, so, so essentially mm. it's like a cloud in space, but then it's like a pool of blood or whatever, or acid for blood, like, as you said, with aliens in Atmo. So, <coughs> so again, it has two different states. So mm. two, it, again, more gameplay, because two different ways you can interact with it, depending on where it is. Because then also, um, that that also even changes first person shooter, um, because if I'm shooting you and it's like dropping on your feet and you're standing and it, you know like the whole stand in the fire meme, mm. but then in space if I shoot you, it's actually you're in a cloud and you've got to get out of the cloud. So it, I, 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 gameplay wise, that's really interesting. Sorry, I only well, just got it, what you were saying, but once I yeah, got it it, 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 it sounds really cool. Yeah, and it, it it starts to fit in with what they were talking about with the different damage mo um states that they get all the different wear and tear states mm. that they're going to have on armor which is then you can see how that easily carries over to a damage module uh or to a to a damage state um because we've got percentage um values so, on armor sorry so maybe it eats through your armor your armor's no useless you take it off you replace it i've just had a um, brainwave that i can't believe anything of early um mm. a flak plasma ammo what if you can cross the ammo types because imagine, um, and let me just give you a scenario, you have a flak mm -hmm. ammo that, that is also plasma, but it goes off and makes this giant plasma cloud that is a defensive barrier that you kind of have to go around or navigate. I mean, that's why I'd rather them stick to damage types than ammo types. I don't, that, because to, mm -hmm. to me, they're, it seems like they're pigeonholing themselves into ammunition has to do one thing. And the reality of ammunition across the board is that it can do multiple things. Mm. It's all about like the combination of yeah. how you want to set up your ammo that like, you can change. To me, you should have like a, the damage type should be which head do I want to put on this shell? Yeah. I, I'm flying my Perseus. I have crates of like plasma heads. I have a, some flak heads. I have other things. And all you're doing is what we talked about that, that like that scene in Fury. You're uh, either clicking on the shell itself or you're mm. unscrewing a different head and putting it on the shell and then loading it into your magazine. Um, um, to um, me, that's where they should have gone. It seems like they're, they're going as entire ammunition types. I'm, I'm now yeah. looking at pitching myself at the, you know, when you go down to the shop to buy your ammo and you gotta go, all right, I've got my Coda ammo, I've got my C54 ammo, but that all of a sudden means there's like, there could be six mm -hmm. different types of ammo for every single gun. I mean, in your rig. So again, I wanna eventually do a video with you on mm -hmm. FPS and how we can, you know, how they can improve the current model of gameplay, but really where it should go and where it is probably going. But you, you know, right now in the real world, you have ball ammo or whatever it is, but it's, you have the same ammo type because you need to know the same, there are different ballistic qualities to each ammo you fire. So you don't want to have a different magazine of different ammo if you're shooting long range because the drop of your round will be different. The accuracy, your accuracy will go down. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, in Star Citizen, we could very well see where you have a magazine of plasma ammo, you have a magazine of distortion ammo or, or um, uh, disarray ammo, you have a magazine of incendiary ammo, and depending on who you're fighting or what you're going after, you might switch out your magazine for a different ammo type. So imagine the complexity of that. Like, yeah. what's the hotkey yeah. for changing out your weapons or your ammo? Yeah, this is, this is for me, the bit that we don't have answered yet, is with all, they... all you know, on ships and stuff, it's how are we... Are we able to change these things on the fly? That's the or other thing. So I was like, are, 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 you... there, are there certain guns where you can literally, the ammo is so cool that you can just go, you know, you change ammo on the gun like a digital display. You go, oh, yeah, I want incendiary, black, <laughs> whatever. Persis. And it just turns, um, well, the Persis yeah. can do that. That's why I think, you, I, yeah. I, from what, literally because of the Persis, I don't think that's what it will be for all the guns. I think that's a special thing of the Persis. And I think that... Just using the purses is enough to tell me that I think they're going to be more individualized. Yeah. Um, well, Pine Badgers right now, look at the magazine. I mm. mean, that tells you you have direct access to the ammunition. It's mm -hmm. the only ship so far that we know of yep. that's currently designed and built that we know that, except for, in some cases, like the Polaris. We know you're going to have direct access to the torpedoes based yep. off the art. 
Yeah. So it yeah. could be that certain Torped torpedoes... Torpedoes and yeah. the Perseus, yeah. I'll give you that. It, yeah. it, Use, use the Hamad as, as an example at the moment. There's going to have to be some way to reload ballistics from inside because that space in the Perseus screams, this is where we're going to store our ballistic ammo mm. for if we're carrying ballistics. Mm. So does that mean then that you go, okay, there's a box of flak ammo, there's a box of um, distortion ammo, or you know the, the disarray ammo, now we're going to go back to flak, then we're just going to go to basic card rounds and... Do you need to set it out like that? Can you? Is it like? Does it have an internal magazine system where, like you say, you can switch between the magazines to mm. load it? Um, can you have multiple ammunition types loaded at once? Can you literally mm. go one round flat, one round? Uh, well, yeah, you know, I talked about this with the Perseus previously because I, mm. I yeah. I'd said this when we when when I was making fun of you for loving that ship so much that the, the thing that would turn me around on the Perseus is if you could stack your magazines with different loads. Mm, so you yep. could do a distortion load, hit somebody with that, their shields weaken, then you hit them with an armor penetration load. Mm. Like that could make the, the Perseus mm. it, it dominate because the ability to be able to change out your, your ammo types without changing yeah. your ammo types. Mm. It's your load stack. Yeah. And that's a real well, thing. When you have tracer rounds in a crew mm. serve weapon, it's one one round out of every so many other rounds. So that's why when you yeah. see a machine gun firing at night with tracer rounds, it's not they're not all tracers. It's like one round every so often will come out. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, can yeah. you actually really, stack your magazines? Um, that's why I find it really interesting that it says it does say behind me here. It says auto loader, um, and a lot of auto loader systems. It's it's not that it's loading, and I, I, I know you know this. It's not that it's loading one shell at a time. It'll load, a, say, a, a magazine or a box of six rounds. So you ru you load six distortion uh, disarray rounds in. You get rid of those, but then for the next box, you then go right now. I want my plasma. Now I want my AP variant, and you just keep hitting it with that. And you know if you if you get two rounds into that box and go well, it's 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 its shields are practically down now then you you've only got four more rounds to worry about before you can change out for a round that's now more useful to the situation that you're in mm -hmm. um and it's so that's that's kind of the way the process is going to deal with it we think it'll be interesting to see you know even for fighters can i mm -hmm. you know can i demand that my arrows ballistics are loaded in a specific order um if, if i sort that out beforehand Hopefully one day. I mean, so first of all, I, I really want to see this type of gameplay in the mm -hmm. game. I don't think it's going to happen for any ship other than the Perseus for a very long time. Um, mm -hmm. I can see programmable torpedoes, but the ability mm -hmm. to have like stacked or, or varying ammo ammunition in a magazine, I think, is if it ever happens, we're talking five, ten years yeah. down the line at the soonest. Um, but for the for the Perseus, I do see it happening, and I see because one, that's what the description of the ship is. It says that mm -hmm. it has those abilities. Um, yeah. You know, will certain ships get that ability? You know, yeah. Because you look at where torpedoes are going, you look where missiles are going, mines aren't even in the game yet, and we know they're yep. coming. Um, you're going to get the ability to customize your damage. It's types. like you saw me write that down or something. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it, that yeah, was my, it, that it was sense. my question I was waiting to ask. I was like, can you guys see this actually waking for, for I, I literally, there's a note, right, on the side of the screen. That and 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 he read that and then he just said it. Right, anyway. Well, we can't see it at the minute because you've been mucking around with OBS. Yeah. But, well, I want to, um, we have, we, we're still going to talk about damage, uh, distortion. So I just yeah. want to talk about d d yeah, distortion yeah. And, and then kind of come back to, 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 to those type of things. So um, I, mm -hmm. now you've all said that, though, I think distortion is clearly aimed at bounty hunting. Um, or or even pirates to take a ship out so they can make sure they secure the yep. cargo. Um, is there anything else that you can see that being useful? Um, um, yeah, I definitely could see it being used for um, commercial use. So the idea of being able to uh, go to a, a remote array that's doing communications, or whatever, and uh, disrupt that with a weapon that doesn't cause permanent damage. Right. So mm -hmm. it gives the ability to be able to hire a pirate, for example, not to attack a person um, or a mercenary, but say, I have a competitor, just disable their ships. Don't yeah. blow them up, don't steal them, just disable them and leave them. Or disable the comms array, or disable um, a fueling station, or whatever it's going to be. Um, so yeah, I, I see them having a wider variety of use. Or you know, even in addition to that, mm -hmm. let's say that you're an exotic animal handler, and distortion could be used like a shocking system on a on an animal 
or a space whale, whatever you want to do, there could be more uses to this weapon system than just the ability to pirate. I also look at that more like the disarray, though, because you could attach that to an animal and it would just keep shocking it so it's stunned. I think I know, the circumstances, so. right? Like, which one do you want to use based off of where you're at? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think the it? only way that distortion damage really works, though, as we've already said, is it has to have a better EMP slash effect on components hmm. than the yeah. disarray. Otherwise, Shorter disarray is like stronger. exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, but you can see, like, you know, because especially when you're attacking larger ships, distortion really comes into its own. Because people are like, yeah, well, you know, you've got to hit what you're targeting. When I'm fighting a holly and I'm trying to stop it from running, its engines are huge. It's not going to be an issue to hit its engines. You know, even like you look at the javelin, you want to shut its engines down. They're not small targets. You know, you want to shut turrets down, not small targets. You, you, you've got um, you, you've got quite a window there. So I think distortion damage, distortion is going to be one of those rare things that the minute you see it being used, it's going to explain what's going on to you. So if you're attacked yeah, by yeah. ships and they come in with hard rounds, that's one thing. If you're being attacked ships and some of them have got distortion on, it's yeah. like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. well, they, they, they don't mean to blow me up, so um, I guess I'll be going to the weapon rack and getting my, uh, getting my rifle out. Well, it makes me also really wonder how that's going to work on foot as well. Like th these rounds on foot, like can you literally disable someone's suit so their whole HUD disappears? Like can can they yeah. stop breathing mm. properly because you know? So it's it's a short, it's a stronger yeah. effect, but it's a shorter mm -hmm. effect. So yes, could it shut off your 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 breathing apparatus? Yes, but it wouldn't do it for so long. Where unless somebody mm. sat there and just kept hitting you with it like every five seconds, mm. then yeah, mm -hmm. you could kill an opponent by just suffocating it possibly. Yeah. So that how long can you hold your breath for in Star Citizen? Do you know? Um, I've seen people do quests with that helmet, so it is possible. I was going to say, l long enough to get from the pad into the hangar and still mm. be alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I die. <laughs> mm. All right, so um, I think we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up here because we're getting up to an hour, but um, mm. what would you guys like to hear from people in the comments below? Because to me, I think this is kind of... I thought we would kind of be able to find out some cool things, and all you guys have done is made more questions for me. So, um, which is the opposite of what I wanted to do, but, uh, success. yes, exactly. <laughs> Very good success. Anyway. Um, so yeah. What would you guys like to hear from, um, in the comments below? Like badges, I'll start with you. Is there anything you specifically would like to hear from people? Like what, what they think about the ammo types or whatever you think? Yeah. G give us some, give us the, the ideas for some rounds that they haven't mentioned yet that we might see later on in Star Citizen. Mm. Um, you know, if you if you could add a round to Star Citizen, what would it be called and what would it do? Mm. I, It'd be a paintball round. Yeah. <laughs> Star Shell. What about you, Star Shell, Yeah. Um, I want to hear about delivery methods because, like, we didn't even touch this. Actually, X gave me a little talking to before we even started this episode that I wasn't mm. allowed to go down my rabbit hole of actual real world military stuff, but. My view is that well, we got to an hour good. and we didn't even get through the ammo type. So you can imagine how yeah. long it was. That, that's why I was trying to narrow the field because I had those questions too. But yeah, go ahead. So I want to hear about delivery methods because to me, this shouldn't be ammo type. It should be mm. damage type. Mm. What ways do you see the, these damage types being delivered? Grenades, um, artillery shells, missiles, torpedoes. Which ones will have them? Which ones won't? And what would you use them for? That's really what, what yeah. I want to know from people. I think that kind of tips the hat, though, when they say ammo, that it's not just for guns. I also think it would be, the, the you know, ammo for a grenade. And then, then you've got all the different grenades. But If you view that as ammunition, yeah. Yeah, well, it, it just depends. It, it, again, they're not it's military no people. They could, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I do think they uh, they have picked these ammo types or damage types, as you put it, whatever you want to call it. Um, they tell me they are very clear design decisions, right? Especially things like the incendiary and stuff like that, because of the, the, I don't think they want things that can just go through armor and stuff like that. Um, and that makes a lot of sense when, because it would almost invalidate ballistics as it is. You know what I mean? So if you can go straight through a shield and straight through the armor, why would you use anything else? Well, because you can just keep hitting them with that and they eventually die where everything else you've got to whittle a shield down, you've got to whittle the armor down. It makes it all invalid. So that's that. when I look at the incendiary round, it makes a lot more sense that that is the, the more targeted Arnie armor one. But we'll see what happens in the interest of time. 
But from me, um, what I would like to hear is, um, I do kind of agree with SA. I would like to see um, the different ones, like are they going to put them in mines and, um, you know, the different vehicle types. But just the things that we talked about today, it did go a little bit all over the place because you can see it's a very deep conversation very, very quickly. Um, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to say is um, what are some other uses you can see for some of these ammos? Because that, that, that's the thing. Like I think we only scratched the surface on, on a lot of that stuff. I wanted to kind of look at the gameplay of them, you know, um, because I think some of them are more defensive and I think some are more offensive. That's why I brought up things like the the, um, the plasma ammo and the clouds and stuff like that. And the, the, when, I, when I said plasma flak ammo, because I could actually see that as a thing. You just, you know, kind of shoot out this big wall of plasma clouds and they've, you know, it's like a physical barrier that they've got to move around and you've got, you can move, make them move in to positions that makes it rather difficult for them. So I don't know. I, I guess I guess just other thoughts of, of of ways they could combine the ammo is what I'm asking in a, in a very long winded way. Sorry. Um, is there anything else you want to add, badges? No. Essay. I'm all good, mate. I think. Yep. Uh, do you want to talk about where, do you want to talk about where people can find you on the internet interwebs, badges? Uh, I am over on YouTube. I stream on Sunday evenings, nine till eleven. Uh -huh. um, come say hi, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I've got a minute. really uh, good video with gaming problems. He's got a really good video up at the moment of him talking to his girlfriend, uh, Chat GPT. It doesn't roll off the tongue, but uh, yeah, anyway. Right. Uh, really good video. You should check it out. Anyway, um, with that, don't forget to like, subscribe, um, ring the notification bell. If you want to go the extra mile on Patreon, uh, YouTube membership, swips, and all that, feel free. All right. With that said, he's been Badgers. He's been SA. I've been XQ. I'll catch you next one. <laughs>